So what's all this buzz we've been hearing lately about wearable technology or just wearables? Do wearable devices have real potential to be paradigm shifting gadgets or is it just the same stuff we've seen before strapped to some part of your anatomy? Well, in my mind, it is the paradigm shifting one. So let's take a look at some of the key differences between this developing product category and the better established one that came before it. So it's not like a processor, RAM, a screen, and a Bluetooth module uh, packed into something are really anything new. So the big change here then is form factor. Wearables need to be small enough to be worn and not get in the way, yet rugged enough to live their lives outside the protective cushion of a pocket or purse while providing adequate battery life for all the operation, oh, and being stylish too. I mean, it's not like consumers ask for much, do they? So how are manufacturers delivering on this whole wearable idea? Well, two of the most well-known early wearables are the Samsung Galaxy Gear, a watch, and Google Glass a, well, glass. Although these products did have some useful features, so seeing emails and texts at a glance and even replying to them with voice, searching for information and getting directions with a little screen that only you can see, taking photos from your wrist or from your head James Bond style, there admittedly hasn't been a ton of long-term enthusiasm for either of them. And you're probably asking yourself, well, gee, why not? Surely everyone wants to walk around looking like Jordi LaForge or Tarangalila, right? Well, in my mind, these devices are yet another example of stuff that wasn't quite ready for anyone but the early adopter enthusiast folks. I mean, remember, modern smart devices are just the latest in a long line of attempts to get people to wear gizmos every day, only to be foiled each time by social pressure, like the Bluetooth headpiece of the 2000s that caused passers-by to assume that Mr. Three-Piece Executive finally had his breakdown, or a lack of compelling enough functionality to outweigh the inconvenience of yet another doodad to strap on in the morning, like the calculator watches of the 80s. But to me, the reason this time is different is because the technology is mature to almost the point where wearables can add more convenience to your life than they take away. And because our electronic devices do so much to improve our lives every day, they've become practically ubiquitous. So the use of one on the street doesn't instantly turn you into a Dorcas. These two things open up a whole lot of new possibilities that combined with solid marketing for the devices might just get wearable tech into the mainstream this time. But once it gets there, what's it gonna look like? Well, here are some examples. Microsoft is working on taking augmented reality to the next level with a wearable pair of goggles that it calls HoloLens, which will project applications and data onto your actual physical surroundings in the form of a hologram. HoloLens goes beyond the capabilities of other smart glasses we've seen to actually let you interact with your 3D canvas for design work, productivity, communication, and even gaming. And there's been a lot of action in the wearable world geared towards athletics and fitness. For simple lifestyle improvements, there are comfortable bands that monitor useful stuff like burned calories, steps taken, and distance traveled while biking, jogging, and otherwise going about your day, as well as your sleep habits, by the way. And if you're into more extreme stuff, let's say you're a skier, for example, Oakley's Recon goggles will display your current speed as well as your position on the trail while also connecting to your smartphone and showing any missed notifications on a heads-up display. Pretty freaking cool stuff, and it's only just the beginning. And if you guys enjoyed this episode of Fast as Possible, when you want to learn more about the future of wearables, check out the video description linked to this Anontech article by Stephen Barrett that we based our video on. Speaking of video, if you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about the world in general through the format of watching videos, then you should definitely check out lynda.com. They've got thousands of online courses with more added every week. Instructors who are experts in their field, you can learn at your own pace, on your own schedule. There's no like, yeah, at 9 a.m. you got your like photography class and then at, you know, 10 a.m. you got your coding class. You can just kind of sit down and relax and enjoy the content however much you want. And what's cool about that is that plans start at just $25 a month. That's right, a month. So you don't actually have to pay per course. You can consume as much or as little lynda.com as you want. And if you're not sure if lynda.com is right for you, well, why don't you just get a 10-day free trial with offer code TECHQUICKIE. We've got that linked in the video description. You can find out if it's for you before actually making a commitment and paying any money. Very cool stuff. So thanks to you guys for watching. Thanks to lynda.com for sponsoring. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you thought it sucked. Leave a comment if you have suggestions for future fastest possibles. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.